Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wednesday Morning Coffee and Cards with Michelle. I am so happy to be here this morning. Oh, it's going to be a really warm day here, and um, it's nice to be up in the studio. My studio's upstairs, and so anybody who has an upstairs area knows that it gets warm. Sorry for the camera adjustment there. And um, so my studio is, is one of the warmest places in the house, which can um, be troublesome in the evening. So doing this in the morning is really nice in the summertime. Good morning, Britain. It's good to see you this morning. I see you're up and early. Do you have a lot of dogs to walk today? I'm gonna pop over and see who else is here. So this week's product of the week was Beautiful Bouquet, and I picked it because today is the 1st of May, so technically it's May Day. And when I was a child, we would make May baskets full of flowers and take them to our neighbor's house. I know that's still a tradition, especially in um, Europe, but it's not so much here in the States anymore, and I think that's too bad. So... We're going to be using some spring flowers using the beautiful bouquet stamp set. Now, this has framelits to go with it, and I'll be using the framelits tomorrow and Friday. But today, we're going to do some simple stamping, um, starting with some basic card bases and some basic layers using the stitched rectangle framelits. So, if you're ready, We'll get started. Good morning, Lisa. It's good to see you this morning. So I have a card base in Whisper White, thick cardstock. I only use the thick Whisper White and the thick Berry Vanilla when I'm making card bases because it holds um, whatever you're going to put on it, right? It's going to stand up without it falling down on your mantle or wherever you're displaying it. So this is just a half sheet and it measures um, five and a half by four and a quarter once you have it scored, all right? And then my colors this morning, I'm using Balmy Blue, Granny Apple Green, and Crushed Curry for some nice spring flowers. And we're going to make a birthday card this morning. Now, if you're just getting started stamping, you really don't need a lot of tools. You just need your favorite stamp set, some of your favorite colors, and some white cardstock. So that's what we're going to do this morning, is just make a really simple and basic card that you could make if you are just starting out. Now, be you do need one tool, and that's the piercing mat, because this is a photopolymer stamp set, I'm going to put my piercing mat under my grid paper and that's going to give me a soft cushioned surface because the photopolymer stamps just don't have the extra cushion that the red rubber does. All right? So this is the um, stems and leaves stamp from the beautiful bouquet and I'm just going to ink that up very gently in my granny apple green and I'm going to put that and you want your paper to absorb your ink. And I like to say, Michelle is great, Michelle is great, Michelle is great three times. But, you know, you could count to three or you could insert your name. Good morning, Michelle. It's good to see you. So I have um, my stems and leaves stamped. And then I'm going to make some pretty balmy blue flowers. This happens to be one of my favorite favorite color combinations right now and I have this pretty little star-shaped flower I'm going to stamp it off just to make sure okay and I'm going to start right up here and remember hold it for a few seconds and you're going to have a beautiful impression every time what I like about the photopolymer is you can see your placement so I love these, they're absolutely clear. And you can see exactly where you're going to put those flowers. 
and oftentimes people will ask me, do I need to re-ink every time I stamp? Well, if you want the same color image all the way around, you do. So don't move that stamp with and re-stamp it without re-inking it. Okay, now aren't those pretty? I love that balmy blue and granny apple green color contrast. When I made a sample, I realized that it was missing something. So I'm gonna take my crushed curry. And this stamp set has a ton of flowers and pieces of flowers. So we have lots of different flower shapes, but we also have these little tiny flower centers. So I played around and I liked this little um, kind of spray, if you will. And it's very small, so you just need a very light hand. And if you want, you can practice right there on your grid paper. Okay, and we're going to just lightly stamp the centers of our flowers. Each time re-inking it and I'm barely touching that ink pad. Some people say that you know to remember to do it lightly you should say tap tap tap. Others say you're supposed to kiss the ink pad. And I know when I was stamping with young children one day, I told them to think of butterfly kisses. That's how light you should touch that ink pad. They're very juicy. Now, I said this was going to be a birthday card. And so I have my happy birthday sentiment. And I am going to do that in memento black. Or not, yeah, it's memento, tuxedo black memento ink. Okay. And I haven't used this stamp, so I like to make sure that I have it nice and straight. Good morning, Donna. It's good to see you today. And I'm going to stamp happy birthday right down in the bottom right-hand corner. And then there's a beautiful sentiment in that same beautiful bouquet stamp set that says wishing you a day of love and happy memories. Now, that could be anything, right? That could be birthday. That could be wedding. That could be anniversary. That could be new baby. But today I'm going to use it for the inside of my birthday card. And I inked it up again in black. Oops, I hope that's not crooked. And there, with just a little s ink, stamps, and paper, we have a very pretty, simple stamping card. Now, if you'd like to step it up a notch, watch what we can do. Before I started this morning, I cut out a stitched rectangle shape in Whisper White and in granny apple green. Now the stitched rectangle shapes are perfect for building layers because you don't have to measure anything. They come nested and all you have to do is cut them out. So I've taken mine out of the box and I have these um, magnetic, they're not plates, they're just pieces of magnet on some really sturdy cardboard. And when I put them away, oops, I just nest them back so that I know which ones I want. And there's a few extras here. And so I have two of these magnetic sheets. So I grabbed the two that I thought would work best. And let's do the same stamping, this time on a small piece of, oh my goodness, so sorry about that, that was my coffee would have been a catastrophe let me tell you all right so let's go back to our granny apple green and we've already stamped this pattern so we're gonna be pros at this okay and I'm gonna move this down a little bit 
we don't need such long stems on this because I want my flowers to show. Okay, so that's another reason I like to have the grid paper because you can see I stamped right off onto it. You don't want to get that on your workspace. Close this up. And my balmy blue. In the winter time, if I were doing this, I might leave my stamps, my ink pads open a little longer on my desk. But because it's summertime and I often have my ceiling fan going, I make sure I close them up right away. Good morning, Sarah. It's good to see you on a Wednesday morning. So happy you could join us today. And so I'm just going to add my flowers around. Good morning, Sean. Wow, we've got a full house this morning. I hope everybody's got some coffee. Okay. And again with my crushed curry centers. The key to stamping, especially when you're starting, is to move slowly. This is not a race. Okay, with slow practiced movements, you're going to get your image every time. So if you find that your images are shaky or they're not stamping all the way around, slow down. It's okay. Now, we have this beautiful little brocade and I have my snail adhesive. I'm going to bring in this granny apple green layer. And I'm going to just line it right up. I have another card base here. And if you're wondering where to, um, excuse me, how to fold your, your base, the raised portion, after you score it, the bumpy part folds in. Okay, so the hill part, if you will, folds in and the valley is on the outside. And just take your bone folder or any nice, flat surface and before I put my flowers on I'm going to stamp my sentiment I have found that the worst thing I can do is to get my card all assembled and then stamp on my base and make a mistake okay and bottom right hand corner I'm going to stamp happy birthday the stamp set Sean is beautiful bouquet And let's stamp the inside while the ink is out, okay? Isn't that beautiful font? I love that. It's just oh, so lighthearted. Okay, now we have this. And we're just going to put, whoops, have a little extra piece of paper there. We're going to layer this right here. So this morning is all about simple stamping. So I'm not even going to grab those dimensionals. I'm just going to use my snail all the way across. And build this card. So now we've gone from a very simple and basic stamping birthday card, one layer, that's just one layer, to a second card using the stitched rectangle framelits. It's the same stamping, it just adds a different layer and perspective. Which one do you like better? I'm 
not sure. I almost like this one better. But they're both, both very nice. So, I appreciate you tuning in today. It is the 1st of May, and you know what that means. There is a limited time offer. Beautiful suite that's coming out just for May. It's going to be featured on my blog today. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to show you some pictures and some video. But I wanted to show you these this morning and get us in the mood to talk about May flowers. All right. Thank you. Take care. And please make sure you join me on Saturday morning for Crafty Saturday. I don't know what we're going to do yet, but I know it's going to be fun. All right. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye-bye.